So what is a gin barrel aged? Gin barrel aged from, it's um, organic gin from White Mountain Distillery in North Conway. New Hampshire. We, we barrel aged it. Um, we barrel aged our base cider for six months, clarified it and gives it these wonderful wood-like characteristics. Ooh. And then I added back to it a tea that I made of fresh ginger, lemongrass, and cardamom with some oh juniper berries. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. And we have a whole keg of that, and that's um, 6%? 6%, so that's why it's gin, so, gin. Gin, gin is a really fun name. And it's just, it's, it's not overpowering, it just has a tinge of the ginger. <laughs> Hey, 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 my name is Rhea Wincaller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. That was William bringing us into this here episode 343 of Cider Chat. Uh, he was talking about the Gin Gin, which is a cider that's going to be on tap at the upcoming Cider Tap Takeover this coming Friday evening, November 4th, in downtown Greenfield, Massachusetts, at a bar called Hawks and Reeds. Now, they have four different levels. I think it's like five levels, actually. Yeah, when you kind of go all the way to the top, it's like five levels. So at the ground, like lower level is a bar called the Wheelhouse Bar. We're going to have six different ciders on tap. And it starts at seven, kicks off events there at seven. And if you happen to have a Cider Days 2.0 t-shirt on, you get a free glass of cider of your choosing. So there's a little incentive there if you were, uh, you know, proactive enough to get online and go to the Cider Chat swag store and get a 2.0 t-shirt, you are in the game. You're going to be able to start that evening with a, a free glass of cider. And we have some really humdingers. We have New Salem Cider, so that's a gin gin. Then we have Colerain Russet, which is Roxbury and Golden Ashmeal's Kernel from Artifact Cider Project, a Simply Dry from Carlson Orchard, Rosé from Valley View Farm, that's down right in uh, the Florence area where both Artifact Cider Project and Valley View Farm both have little cider bars. I know that Artifact is going to be open this coming weekend, so do head over that way. If you're certainly coming up from the southern region, coming up on Interstate 91, stop in. You know, Or let's say you're coming off on 90 from New York and you're going to go right by Northampton. Definitely check it out. We love Artifact. They're one of the sponsors of this here event, Cider Days 2.0. And we also have two ciders from Ciders of Spain, which imports ciders from Spain. So you're going to have like Austerian ciders on freaking tap. No, you will not be able to do a long pour, which is really high. We're not going to be doing that, but... These ciders don't do that one with this th these particular ones. So uh, check it out at the Wheel Bar. Uh, there is just so much going on this weekend, folks. I I'm going to just keep on going through this because it's like yowza. But before I go on, let me just welcome you to Cider Chat. If you are brand new to this here podcast, there is just so much going on in the world of cider that I feel like I'm just like running like with angel wings through the sky, just plucking up all these like good news everywhere. So if cider is something that's new to you, or even if you've been involved in a long time, you have landed in the right spot. Make sure that you follow Cider Chat, uh, subscribe to the button so you don't miss the latest episode. A lot of great episodes coming up after we get through Cider Day's weekend. I have all the recordings from the main Apple camp that I'm going to be releasing, which is going to blow my mind in the post-production and then uploading it for everyone here. And then it just goes on and on. So check out Cider Chat. Follow Cider Chat on Facebook. Also, you know, Instagram at Cider Chat, Ciderville, and on Twitter at Cider Chat. But for this particular episode, we have a little bit of catching up for Cider Days events this weekend. The events that Cider Chat is producing called Cider Days 2.0. There's ticketed events and free events. And a lot of little things happening in between. So I want to catch you up to all of that because I know folks are coming in from little hubs of Ciderville all over the map. So I want to keep you up to date. <laughs> so I'm going to just take a, a little bit of pause here, catch my breath. Good idea, Rhea. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Quince. Hey, before I catch my breath, you know I'm not alone here in the Cider House at Cider Chat Central. I do have the talking palms you just heard from Mr. Quince. Should we move on? No, Mr. Quince, I need to introduce you, you palms. That, that that was a med, Lars. Rhea, we're trying to move on. We have a lot of information. And that was Perry Pear. Yes, hello. Of course I know who I am. I am Perry Pear. Right. So I, I'm here with the Talking Palms who helped me out in the production of this here podcast. And um, yeah, so they're on the sidelines. And uh, shall we take a little pause? Roger that. Walk into the orchard. Oh, thanks. Thanks. That like just the thought of walking the orchard just totally helped my whole body kind of decompress. Yes, we noticed, Rhea. Good exhale. Thanks, Perry Pear. Okay, let let me go first before I start going through all the updates. Let me just say what this here episode is about, which is really kind of talking about volunteers. Because volunteers for Cider Days 2.0, I consider them the engine of this event. I've been working on this coming weekend which seems like forever is a lot has happened in 2022 and rolling up to it, you know, you get all your dominoes in a row, but in the end, the event is only going to work out with the people that you have surrounding you. So I wanted to give everyone some tips, what I've been learning about working an event like this and how to really love up the volunteers because going way back, I was that volunteer back in 1994 when Cider Days started, and I continued to volunteer the rest of the time. You know, for like 28 years, I've been volunteering and then on the Cider Days committee, you know, helping set it up, being behind the scenes. And I know what it feels like to be a volunteer, like what is coming up. So I'm, I'm looking at it from both sides, and I thought it'd be really helpful for everybody to get a sense of that because I know that you out there might be looking at doing a festival like this or something else or are a volunteer yourself. And these are some of the things to look out for when you're approaching an event to know, well, is this really worthwhile to be taking part in and do the organizers have it together? So that's what we're going to look at here just to kick off this here episode 343. So let's first start with why do people volunteer? And really, I can only speak from my own vantage point, even though I've talked to other people about this. It's really my own vantage point. And I I think that this is really key because I've looked at this a lot, like how do we bring more volunteers in and what is the, the hook that brings folks this way to say, yeah, I'll dedicate my whole beautiful Saturday to helping you out. And I think it stems from the fact that, you know, people like to feel helpful. I know that one way I like to hang out with my friends is to get a project done. And when I first moved to Western Massachusetts, there was a big project happening. Uh, I I was kind of on the sidelines because I was kind of moving here, but I wasn't quite here yet, called the New England Peace Pagoda. And folks came from all over the map just to volunteer their time. They're camping out in the town next door to me, Leverett, Massachusetts, where they're building this giant pagoda. I put a link in the show notes so you could check it out because it it looks like a giant white onion and folks just got into it. It felt so good, like having a common goal. Historically, we see that over and over again where folks will rally behind each other to work towards one common goal goal. I mean, think about it, you know, taking down the Berlin Wall. I mean, that's where you just felt this like uplift. It felt good to be engaged with others. And at a time where the life, you know, our life path is just going faster and faster and faster. It's nice to kind of slow down and have a way to connect with people that isn't on our phone or texting, but it's like face to face working to make something, a particular event happen. So that's key. And I know that's been key for me to be part of this whole first weekend of November since 1994. And another focus that I think is is really important, because I've I've thought about volunteering and why. Why do we want to come together? You know, it's a nice way to hang out with people. You know, in in my special spot of Ciderville, when somebody has a birthday, we might say, well, what are we going to do as a group project? And it might be all getting together and going over and stacking their wood that cord of wood for the winter. That feels great. And then we have the birthday cake and, you know, start raising glasses. It's a way to like signify that moment, get something done. And you feel like freaking 
awesome. We had a, a, a real amazing event here happen years ago in the late 90s. No, no, not 1980s. <laughs> it happened like late 1980s. Uh, in the town next door where I live called Leverett, Massachusetts, there was a building of a peace pagoda. And folks came from all over. And it really turned me on to this area where I was kind of looking where to land. I was overwhelmed by the communal energy of coming together and building this this signature of peace. You know, the special amazing mountaintop was chosen for this like memorial a peace pagoda. There's a link in the show notes to it. You should see it. And you could go visit. It's open to the public. Just an amazing backstory of all these people coming together to build it. And we do that over and over again. So tap into that. You know, this is what I like I like to rally behind. And I know folks out there listening in Ciderville, I have a feeling you do too, because there's a lot of people that rally behind Cider Chat to help keep this podcast on the air. And I know that if all of you weren't like all over the world helping and we were closer together, we'd be getting together on the weekend, like doing like cider making together. That that is what happens as a nice way. I mean, really, the short the short list is it's a nice way to spend time with people. Let me go on next with tips on how to take care of your volunteers and what we're doing at Saturdays 2.0 for the volunteers this weekend. If you want volunteers to succeed at your event, you want to reach out to them early on. Do not wait for the first month or even two months out. Once Saturdays 2.0 was set up and we knew what the events were going to be, then you could start deciding, okay, how many people do we need to make this event run smoothly and not burn out the folks that are helping out? So there's, you know, a couple back things that you need before you actually start reaching out to your volunteers. You need to know how many folks, and then you go out into your network to ask for help. Now, I know that we are in the world of smartphones and texting is the way some people only communicate. So for those folks, you're going to text them. For other folks, you got to suss out the volunteers and know about the people that you're reaching out to and ask them, okay, what's the best way to communicate? Is it going to be texting or emails or actually a phone call? And sometimes with some volunteers, I will do all three, especially if I haven't heard back, which let me make a note here. You always want to get your volunteers cell phone number because on the day of you got to get a hold of people and if you haven't followed up with that you know you might be you know up a creek without a paddle so you contact them and then tell them once they have confirmed if you're a couple months out like I was that you will be getting back to them with more details about the actual event as it moves forward because in the case of Cider Days 2.0 there is a free event at the pop-up on Saturday, the cider pop-up, but there's a number of ticketed events and you have to have a sense of how that's going and how many people you're going to need. Once that is figured out, then you could start drawing up the tasks for the actual event. But you don't want to overwhelm your volunteers. If you're a couple months out, let them know that closer up now, you'll be reaching out to them again and filling them in on the details. Now the details are all about the mission of the event, you know, give them an overview of why you're doing this event. And then an, also an overview of the entire program. So if they're only volunteering for one piece, give them an idea of the, the whole scope of the project. And that will help them prepare themselves mentally and kind of physically too. Because if they just thought, oh, this is just one little dinner, you know, just a cider dinner on Saturday night and don't understand that there's a Calvados, you know, an American apple brandy tasting and there's a tap takeover and then there's morning workshops um, of the history of Applejack or John Bunker talking about orchard care for homeowners. They won't really get it. They just won't, you know, unless you give folks the info. So give them the full script, set out a layout of the task that is going to happen for them and make a write-up that you post on the wall the night of the event. And all the feedback that I've been getting from the folks who are going to be helping out at Saturdays 2.0 is that they really appreciate that. They want to know what to wear. They want to have an understanding of what to expect and what's going to happen once they go on site. So that's absolutely critical is giving people the tools for their own success. Having healthy and happy people makes an event run 
smoothly. So asking folks to volunteer, for instance, at the Calvados and American Apple Brandy tasting this Friday night or the cider dinner means that they're going to be there right before dinner time or during their own dinner time. So feed the volunteers. Now, I know that not everybody can afford this. So maybe you just say, hey, bring your bag lunch or your bag dinner and we'll all have a little sit down. But this concept of like throwing volunteers out without feeding them, it just kind of sucks. And I know that because I experienced that years ago and early cider days, I was doing wait staffing for some of that uh, the cider dinners that took place. I remember just running. I was stoked. I was like super stoked. I was just running my tail off with people and we were having a blast, but we never got fed. We never had any food ourselves. And um, that kind of stuck with me. It stuck with me so much so that for Cider Days 2.0, one of the things that we're doing for the volunteers on Friday night is we're going to have some food come in. So before all of you who are ticketed coming we're going to have had some food before we start serving because it's incredibly important to take care of people and have them be satiated so that they could be in their best state of mind. And then at the cider dinner, well, you know it, that the volunteers there, they're going to be having the same meal as the folks attending because that's the way I roll and that's the way Aunt Kathy's Kitchen rolls too, who's going to be the key caterer at that event. So excited to have Aunt Kathy. In fact, let me bring this little piece in here that I recorded with her. I met her yesterday at the site just to talk about some things and we're going like a mile a minute and uh, just just give you a sense of who she is. She's going to be bringing business cards to the cider dinner on Saturday night. And if you do any kind of events, you're going to want to get a hold of her. But, you know, just hear her, like, how she looks at things. And she's just formulating and formulating and formulating. Here we go. And then the shepherd's pie, it's going to be vegan. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but I'll figure it out until it'll take me 10 minutes. And then the butternut squash <laughs> soup will also be dairy-free. Yeah. Because I do everything dairy-free because I know me. I can't do dairy, but there are so many people that come up to the table all the time and go, does that have dairy in it? Because I can't have it. But we'll make it. It doesn't, you wouldn't even know that it has. And I'll use some cider uh, because I like apple in it, Mm -hmm. butternut squash, apple soup. So we'll do that. And all I do is just carrots, onions, celery, butternut squash. I sweat it in the pot. And then I add the dairy-free milk and puree it and, and the apples and that's it and salt and pepper love it nothing else it's oh, so good Kathy Kathy you yeah. are yeah so it'll rock. and then like I said I, I'm so excited I bought that new fancy soup warmer Oh, it's got okay. the it's got oh. the sterno under it. It's just like it's a like chafer, but it's- yeah, she's gonna figure out the shepherd's pie in like ten minutes on how to make it totally like vegan f- and gluten free. This is an amazing chef. I'm really excited for everybody at the cider dinner, and we have a little change in the menu there. Actually, the dessert is no longer gonna be apple crisp. We're actually gonna be using a recipe out of the Applejack, the Spirit of Americana cookbook from Lairs and Company. I mean. All right. She said, let's do this. Let's do this like, you know, bread and butter pudding. Uh, And it's going to be infused with the Lair's Applejack, which is, and that's straight up Applejack. It's not a blend Applejack. That's 100% apples. And if you didn't hear last week's episode on the side, we're going to be having some heirloom blended barrel aged ice cider from Eden where they used Lair's and company barrel. So a used barrel from Lairs and Company for this ice cider. Just incredible. So (laughs) there you have it. Cool stuff. So that's Aunt Kathy. And um, everybody who's a volunteer that evening is going to be enjoying that experience. So really excited about that to make sure that the volunteers feel seen, feel heard, and are well loved because it is the volunteers who are going to be the face to the public besides you, and you want to make them feel important because you know what? They are the engine of the event. 
For Saturdays 2.0, we took it a little bit further because in this case, we have volunteers who are going to be making the Lisa for the cider dinner. And I have a little clip here where we met uh, just a couple days ago to like really hone in on this with the volunteer bartenders at Cider Days 2.0 Cider Dinner. So let me share that little clip there as we're going over like, well, really, how much layers straight Applejack do we want to have in this drink? <laughs> Where that line is. So that there's a little space there. So, so if, I were, halfway if, I were, up. if I were to... You're halfway up. Okay. From the, from the line to the rim. That way, if somebody's carrying it, they're not going to spill. And if I want to mm. stir it myself, you just shake I it have up. I have a little room. So, so you like it that high, but I like it a little bit lower. Yeah, but you I, know what that is? That is four ounces of um, seltzer, uh, of club. Uh-huh. Because I was like... That's kind, good. Like, see, I still even have a little bit But left. if you're talking about what you're talking about right here, that's the top line. I that think doesn't. That, right. that, I think Right. It does Come not on. look. Oh, oh okay. So, the, yeah, this is too you short because that's like a, a yeah, over an inch. We don't want to. You inch. and I were sitting no, here. We would barely, drink these short. We would drink three of them. Right. right, that's true. But that's not, not the way we're doing it. I only this. had one sip off of this. Yeah. And I could tell you're already slurring the words. <laughs> okay, we were having a bit of fun and trying to figure out, you know, is this a one ounce pour or should we go with the ounce and a half? And uh, we're going to be doing the one ounce pour of the Applejack because there's going to be so much cider to drink. And then we're going to be finishing off with the ice cider. We want folks to be able to walk out steady and, you know, not overdo it, really. The, the the responsibility <laughs> lies in your hands in the end, but don't overdo it. Don't over, overdo it this weekend. Be careful uh, because cider is kind of a creeper buzz in a way. And believe me, I know that. So be careful out there. <laughs> Anyways, we were having fun, uh, which kind of brings me to the last piece here around the volunteers is once all is said and done, you really want to follow up with appreciation for the volunteers. And I know a lot of folks would just give folks a t-shirt, which is really nice, and maybe a souvenir glass. But, you know, up the ante, thank people once they volunteer. And that's something I'm really looking forward to at the end, because I know that the friends and family members that are stepping forward for Cider Days 2.0 are doing so because, well, they love cider. And uh, they also are really stoked to welcome everyone from out of town and even in town to these events. And that just means the world to me because, boy, we really want this to be special. When I come back, we're going to have a little clip here with uh, Jerry Friedman of Beaver Pond Distillery. Just get a little glimpse of him. And uh, we were tasting just a couple days ago as I was picking up this five-year-old plus Applejack that we're going to be having this Friday evening. And uh, I'm just going a little bit off on what I'm getting, the overtures of this glass with Jerry. It was really nice meeting him. He's out in Petersham, Massachusetts, a really easy stop on the way. It's this little distillery on a dirt road. I guess the town wouldn't let him put up signs. So be aware of that. If you're heading to his distillery, they're going to be open all this weekend. And it is cool. He has some really nice eau de vie there and is working his best to make it possible. I also tasted some nochina with him, which is made from uh, unripened black walnuts and Oh my God, it was just like the vitality in that glass blew me out of the water. He has a number of different brandies with other fruits too. So check it out, Beaver Pond Distillery. Stop by, he's on the, the, the way here or the way back home to Boston or Worcester County. Worth your visit. But let, let's hear this little clip here talking about this five-year-old apple brandy that we'll be having this Friday evening. We have his history of like so many stills around here and now here you are catching up on a craft that should have been passed down to you, to, you know, blah, blah, blah. How, you have to like go out of state I'm, to find I'm something. I'm farmer distiller license number 27. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. It's a lucky number. We just took a sip of the five-year-old apple brandy. Now you're smoothed out there. And there you feel the oak much. holding it there. Yeah. You know, right in the beginning, like the oak has like caressed the, the liquid. It's had nice saturation to the barrel. And it's really like, poo. Yeah. This a is ball a, in your mouth. This That's is a nice. Much nice. nice. Yeah. I just got to say, I'm so impressed by the American apple brandies that we're going to be having this Friday evening. It's going to be out 
outstanding. And everything's a go, folks. Everything's a go. Uh, the cider dinner is sold out. There's still tickets available for this Friday night tasting. Not too many, but there are some. You might be able to get some at the door. We accept cash and Venmo. So if you get that ready, you could maybe get into this like premier tasting of seven different brandies, four from France and three from the U.S., paired with a amazing charcuterie plate. So you'll be all set there. And then afterwards, hang out for the Tap Takeover in the same building at Hawks and Reed Performing Arts Center. Six different drafts of cider. Yeehaw! Can't wait to meet Casey later this week to hook up those tanks. And we'll be uh, meeting up on Thursday, actually, Casey and I, who is uh, working down at Artifact Cider Project. Casey, I think, is like the main manager now there. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to ask. But Casey and I are then going to be going over to Four Phantoms Brewery to listen to Drew Phillips talk about cider and beer collaboration. So, oh. Cider Days. The week has started. It's Western Mass Cider Week. A lot going on. Check out what's happening at the Dirty Truth in Northampton. Every single night they have a little event. I think Thursday night is International Cider Night. Woo! Lots going on. Let me catch you up with some of the things that are happening that you should know, uh, which is really critical to your participation. So you are staying in the loop too, just like the volunteers. Okay, Perry Pear has handed me the list, and I'm going to just shoot through this as we go. Take your time, Maria. Take your time. Uh, okay, I'll try to slow down a little bit. <sighs> I'm going to do that one more time. Yeah. Dang, Perry Pear, you know just the right words to say. Indeed, Rhea, indeed. Uh, we talked about Friday night. We got that. We got the, the tap takeover. Uh, something that everyone should know who is going to a ticketed event at Saturdays 2.0 is that at on Saturday, or actually all weekend, if you bring a physical copy of the ticket, you know, that you, you are signed up for Saturdays 2.0, or you could have it on your phone and show the folks at Ryan and Casey Liquors, which is right down the street and has a huge selection of apple brandies. They have pomos, they have all different kinds of selections, both from Europe and amazing ciders from the U.S. of A. and beyond. You will get 10% off your, your price. Now that's a deal, right? 10% off if you are a ticket holder to any of the Cider Days 2.0 deals. So that is quite special. And it continues on with other good news. So let's see. We have on Saturday, there are still there's still space for the John Bunker uh, talk in the morning and also the History of Applejack. And you get three tastings during the History of Applejack, not to mention you get to meet the Oprah of Distilling, which is Lisa Lair's done talking. She's a global ambassador for the oldest distiller in the U.S. Yeah, what's not to love about that? So we have that going on. And also during the day, outside at 1 p.m. is going to be the Morris Dancers right in front of Hawks and Reed. It's going to be a beautiful weekend right across the street at the Pushkin, which is an old bank building smack in the middle of downtown Greenfield is the cider pop-up and you want to go online, there is a downloadable schedule of not only Cider Days 2.0 events, but as many events as we could get on there that have been coming our way. So do go to the website. There'll be a link in the show notes. Just look up or Google Cider Days 2.0 schedule and right in the beginning of that page, you'll see download the event schedule, and you'll have it there. And it is getting updated. I mean, like every single day, that is getting updated. Uh, some of the things on there is that we have cider pours happening at the pop-up. You get a souvenir glass for a $5 fee. You got to show proof of ID, and you could have cider from Carlson's Orchard. Uncle John's, Uncle John's from Michigan is going to be in the house, and you're going to have some cider from Michigan, which will be really cool. And also ciders of Spain is pouring too. 
along with all these amazing vendors and cider talks and presentations. Do check that out and go into the vault because Cider Chat will have its own little staging there in the bank vault, of course. (laughs) Special delivery. Oh, what's that, Mr. Quince? What do we got there? It's a box. Oh, Medlars, bring it over here. Okay, okay, let's just pull it out. All right. Oh, look, it's from Uncle John's Hard Cider in Michigan. No pears, eh? Uh, Uncle John's, I don't know if he has any pears, but Perry Pear. I know, I know, it's cider days, not pear days. Buddy, hang in there. Folks will eventually get just how important pears are. Indeed, Rhea, indeed. Anyways, moving right along, um, this bottle here is beautiful label. Uh, Sent over by Mike Beck from Uncle John's Hard Cider. I'm going to read the label. It says, Our Michigan Farm Collective hand selects apples from half-century-old heirloom trees, making this cider distinctively delicious. Ingredients, 100% apples. And this is 6.5%. And uh, I have been to Uncle John's Cider Mill, and wow, what, what a beautiful orchard. And I think you might be talking about some of the back trees there in the orchard that are super, super old and kind of like stretch out in their lanes. It's a, a stunning back orchard there. So if you ever get a chance, definitely stop at Uncle John's. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you all weekend uh, in New Salem, let's pull this up here, Perry Pear, on the screen. Can we get that up here? I'm on it, Rhea. I'm on it. There's a lot of events happening at New Salem Cider. So look at the list at the Cider Day schedule. And some of the things that we don't quite have on there yet is there's going to be an author of a book called Lost Towns of Swift River Valley. And she's going to be doing a signing. That's Elena Palandio, who is the author. She's going to be talking. There's going to be a blacksmith there all day long. So it's a really cool experience. Bring your family out to find the apple pretzels. Find out how to make hard cider mustard, the New Salem's hard cider mustard with William Groda, or making cider syrup at home with Terry McHugh, who is the main farm manager there. On Sunday, it's beginning in advance cider making with April Woodard, and then bring your own cider, tasting and evaluation, fun and troubleshooting for amateur cider makers with April Woodard. That all starts on Sunday at 1 p.m., and there's just a lot going on there, so check out the schedule. Now that I have one more thing I'm going to talk about, there's probably a lot more, but you know, it's all online, all available for you. Um, but well, actually two more things. Let me just take a little breather here. Good idea, Ria. <sighs> oh, that feels so good. <laughs> it's getting close. Oh my goodness. The clock is ticking. Okay. Uh, Fermentus is a sponsor of Cider Chat and they were kind enough to send yeast to me to pass out at Cider Days 2.0, specifically for the folks coming to the cider dinner. But I do have some extra packets. So if you see me about at the cider pop-up, I will be able to hook you up with some Saf Cider Yeast from Fermentis. I have four different styles, each with unique qualities that are going to lend something to the cider that's a little different than the other. So why not try all for. And how nice is Fermentus for doing that, giving little gift packs. Super, super cool. They are the world leading yeast provider, not only working for cider, but also for beer and wine and other products that ferment. In fact, Recently, I mentioned that they did build a new facility in France to really delve into yeast further, you know, up- upgrading their whole technology and dedicating more time to cider. So it's good news for all of us out there in Ciderville. So again, you see me at the pop-up. I might have some cider yeast for you and uh, you can try your hand at it. Find out more at fermentus.com. If you are a patron of Cider Chat via the Cider Chat Patreon page, or you signed up for the East Cider newsletter, then last week you received a notification about something else that's taking place as part of Cider Days 2.0. And that is anyone who is a ticketed holder attending these events, you have an opportunity to essentially either reserve or mint your own POAP. Now, you might be thinking, what the heck is a POAP? It's essentially a digital ticket. It stands for Proof 
of attendance protocol. And it's an NFT and it will be sitting on the blockchain. Now, what the heck is the blockchain? The blockchain is essentially a digital ledger. And the cool thing is that no one's ever done this for CIDR before. And so CIDR Days is going to have the first POAP. And it's a keepsake, uh, one way to kind of stay connected to the event. I mean, think about it. I, I still remember some of the ticket stubs that I held on to. In fact, if I went to some of my little keepsake boxes here and open it up, I can guarantee you I'm going to find little trinkets that, that I've collected over the years, like postcards or a ticket stub to a special concert. I have invitations to different weddings that I've gone to for my family members or a special poem that was written on a piece of paper for a special event and or even like theater booklets from events that I went to on Broadway, these mementos that we keep often in a little box. Now mementos are going digitized. So anyone attending, you'll have two options here. One, it, you could just have an email and reserve your POAP because a lot of folks haven't really caught up to this technology and that's okay. But there might be some folks attending who do have a digital wallet, a .eth address. And if you do, you'll be able to mint your POAP immediately. And for the rest of the folks, you could just uh, reserve it with your email address. You know, it's really easy. It doesn't It costs nothing to you. And as far as what a POAP is worth, it's really, you know, what is a, a keepsake worth? Uh, you know, I, I put this question out to folks. What is that World Series ticket to the first World Series ever that your great-grandfather or great-grandfather gave you? And in that case, it might just be priceless, right? You can't put a cost on something that has memories. And, you know, like this box or these boxes, I have boxes in my home of little keepsakes and we keep them because of what they mean to us. And I know I wouldn't be doing Saturdays 2.0 if it didn't mean something to me. Well, I think we have a wrap here for this year, episode 343, which means that we are seven episodes away from episode 350, and then we'll be moving into season eight of a Cider Chat. Wow. I know. Isn't that something? It really kind of like wows me too, because <laughs> we've been so full out getting, you know, the French Cider Tour going, and we went to Maine Apple Camp. We'll have some episodes coming up with that. We have an episode with Ragged Hill. That's Anne Garwood Hamp and her father, Steve Garwood. Uh, we're going to be going through a whole range of tastings there. We have some really cool episodes coming up. Uh, you know, really, the sky is the limit with cider. So <laughs> we're in the right spot, aren't we? Indeed we are, Ria. And I would like to see a little bit more on Perry. Duly noted, Perry Pear. Duly noted. But I'm not sure if we'll be back next week. We might be taking next week off, right? And just kind of like chilling out after working straight out. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We have a lot of work out in the orchard, getting ready, putting things to bed for the winter because it's no November here in, uh, and, and we're seeing that change. So got some wood to stack. Yeah, we're going to be working it. Maybe we'll have to have a little uh, group project on stacking all the wood. <laughs> Count me in. Well, thank you, Mr. Quince. I will. And with that, I leave you here. This is Aria Windcaller and the Talking Palms. Hello! Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider. We like palms. We love orchards. And having fun, there is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. We like cider. We like palms, we like orchards, having some fun, there is a reason, 
There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh yeah. We like cider. Oh yes, we do. We like palm. Oh yes, we do. We love orchards, having some fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we drink it like this. We like walking down the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh yeah. We like cider. We like palm. Oh yes, we do. We like orchards, having some fun. Ha! Ah.